Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mike Colleen at MikeColleen.com. Alright, so I'm going to bring up a subject that is kind of random, but I think it really, really applies to empaths, empathetic people, people are spiritual, people are just really good-hearted people who care. So here's one thing I want to say. It's a thought that just came into this um, out, out of the clear blue sky, but it really does apply to this. One thing I want to express and really get out there, it's something that's been on my mind for a while, is if you're an empath, you have to, re re you have to realize you were raised by narcissists to benefit narcissists. To the extent that it's almost programmed into you or at the very least it's conditioned slash brainwashed into you from a very very young age and it continues when you go to school when you go to work when you everywhere even to some of your friends houses whose parents and or siblings are narcissists like this is constantly brainwashed and conditioned into you you are constantly being taught that don't be selfish do for others don't be selfish do for others whereas the narcissist they're totally selfish they only do for themselves and they want to make sure that you make them their number one priority even above yourself now it's funny because I've I work really hard on this channel to make sure you guys understand that self-love is really 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 important for you because that's how you heal because you were damaged to the extent of thinking that loving yourself, standing up for yourself, taking care of yourself, doing for yourself is bad. Even providing and or protecting yourself. You feel, a lot of you feel a tremendous amount of shame and guilt, like, oh, I'm doing something wrong. I'm, I'm putting myself first. It's like, well, why would you put this total stranger ahead of you? You've been so brainwashed that what is natural, normal, and healthy for a human being, like to take care of themselves, to protect themselves, to protect their emotions, you know, provide for themselves, you put that on the back burner and you put other people's needs ahead of you. And I'm not talking about your children. I'm talking about someone that might not, might not even be a family member. They could be a total stranger. But your goals and dreams are always put aside for, for other people's goals and dreams. And because you're taught like, oh, well, you're selfish and this is wrong. And here's the thing. You don't realize that that's not healthy. That is out of whack. It's out of balance is what I mean in a very extreme way. So what I'm trying to say is you literally have been raised, brainwashed, conditioned to not only put narcissists first, but you were raised by narcissists your entire life and you didn't even know it. You're like, well, my parents were narcissists. Maybe they weren't. I'm talking about your school teachers, your bosses, this person, that person. It was a, a lifelong conditioning. So here's what this video is about. It's probably going to be a short video, to be quite honest with you is this, you tend to always be there for other people. Like it's just, you don't even think, like you just, do, someone asks, you do. This is, this is one of the most beautiful nights ever. This is quite amazing. So, is beautiful. all right, I'm gonna give you a real life example I just had. Uh, a neighbor of mine called me up at midnight and um, he's English is his second language, and I didn't quite understand like what's going on. Like he was, I could tell something. He was urgent. Something was going on. I'm already throwing on my sweats as we're, you know, as, as we're talking and, and sandals. And he's saying something like, "There's a there's a letter on the wall." I'm like, "There's a letter on the wall. What are you talking about?" Like I'm thinking, like, is this guy drunk? And what? Is something wrong? And he go, and I'm grabbing my keys. So as we're talking, like I'm. I'm already moving towards the door, man. And so I couldn't understand. What, so I said, you mean like an alphabet letter, like A, B, C? He goes, no, no, no. I'm like, all right, I'll be right there. I'm on my, you know, on my way. So I get there like in 30 seconds. 
knocking on his door and I'm like, what's going on? He goes, there's a man outside my window. I'm like, what? So we went around the side. Well, this person um, had already started going around the back to, well, I guess technically that would be the front. So to his truck and he's put, and he just put a ladder up and I'm like, I go, and we're, I'm walking up. And so he's acting like he didn't know we were behind him. He's got a light on. He's looking inside his truck, you know, like he's looking for something. And I'm like, oh, this guy's just blowing me off like he doesn't know I'm there. So I'm standing right behind about three, four feet. And I go, hey, yo, buddy, hey. So he turns around. The He's got a light on his on his head, on his forehead, blasting. Whoa, bro, what the fuck? And he's, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm like, dude, what are you doing here? It's midnight. A well, long story short, he had his ladder going up to the third floor of, um, of the building. And he was trying to break into someone's apartment. So, um, long story short, he said he knew the people, he left something in there, you know, kind of like, yeah, I'm kind of looking at this guy like something sketchy, he goes, I left, he goes, I left my keys in there and my phone, I'm like, that's funny, because you got your keys in your ignition right now, and he looks at me, he goes, uh, I've got another set, I'm like, yeah, sure you do. So here's the deal, Be, without even hesitating, I'm, I'm running towards this, this guy's help, because he's like, because he's got a, well, he's got a wife and kids and stuff. And here's my point. Let's say you needed something like maybe a piece of paper, like you need someone just to write something down to help you out with this situation, etc. And they keep blowing you off and they keep, oh, well, I'll do it tomorrow, 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 right? So you've helped them one, two, three, four, five times, whatever. Now here's how you do it. If they have an opportunity to help you and they can help you, for example, taking a pen and paper and writing stuff down, and they don't, that's when you cut them off. All right, I'm gonna give you another example. Years ago in my 20s, I think I was probably like 27, 28, something like that, I don't remember how old I was. Uh, my brother-in-law called me and said, hey man, I, I need you to help me, you know, I gotta pick up my truck. Apparently it, it had gotten towed it was in the tow yard and if it stayed overnight then it was going to add on like another 100 bucks or 90 bucks back then is what they charged for storage per, per day something like that and of course i had to drop everything i was doing because there was only about i think 30 minutes or an hour to get get it was kind of out in the country it wasn't that far i think it's 25 minutes or something maybe 30 minutes max but I had to go like right now because otherwise I get okay, you know, of course he didn't kick me down five bucks or say thanks or nothing like that. But, you know, we got his truck. He was good. Peace. So literally the very next week, the same thing happened to my car and I need to get my car because it was like we had like an hour and a half or two hours to get there. Otherwise, they're going to charge me another overnight fee of like 90 bucks or whatever it was. And he goes, no, no, I'm too busy. I'm like, too busy doing what? Oh, you know, I'm watching my favorite TV show, and I was just like, that that just blew my mind. Needless to say, of course, I was upset. <laughs> and so, um, that is a situation where, like, oh, so I helped you. I've helped, well, I've actually helped him and my sister many, many times. Anyway, so that's a perfect example of when someone can help you in return, and they don't... That it's a non-reciprocal relationship. It's a one-way relationship. Get out, cut it out, be done with it. So the lesson really is simple. If somebody has, and this is it right here. If somebody has an opportunity to actually help you and they don't, you're done with them. Now here's why. Because they're, they will not be there for you when you need a friend. Now, I'm not talking about like, oh, they're at work and you're asking to, to like lose their job or something, <laughs> you know, unless it's a really, really big deal because that, that would be a good friend. But I wouldn't cut them off, you know, for something like that. So the point being is if literally like if they're just watching a TV show and they can do it like physically, financially, you know, um, you get what I'm saying? Like they have the ability to actually help you and they don't. I probably should have said financially. I don't want to put that in there. Take that out. 
but they, they have the ability to help you and they don't, be done with them. And when I say being, be done with them, I mean cut them out of your life. Now, here, here's why. Again, because when you really need a friend and you need help, they're not going to be there for you. It's a one-way relationship. Now, here's the other reason why. These people are taking up your time. They're taking up your space. That's a really good way of saying it. See, if these people that don't help you and are not reciprocal are in your space and now it's all full up, when you need help, you can't get help. So you don't want to be pouring your heart, energy, time, and even money into people who don't reciprocate. You Now here's the deal. You want to get rid of, cut these people out. So now, you, let's say you have a circle of space. Now you have extra space so now other people can come in. You only want people in your circle that are giving back to you when they can. Because, it, okay, so if you're, okay, I didn't say this part. If your circle is full up with people that do not reciprocate, do not give back to you, do not help you in return, your circle is full up. You have no space for other people. And therefore, you won't have other people who can reciprocate. So cut those people out. Now you're making room to let other people come into your life, into your circle, so to speak. You know, you have, you have enough certain amount of time in the day, week, month, year to give back to other people. So these are the people that you want to give to you. You want to help them. Oh, they need a ride to the grocery store. Oh, they got to pick up their car. Oh, you know, they need to borrow 20 bucks, you know, something like that. And then when you're in need, maybe even an emergency, they're going to help you versus some person like, yeah, I don't care if you're bleeding to death. Yeah, I'm watching my favorite TV show. Yeah, I don't really care if you're going to get charged another $120 overnight. And, and we have enough time to leave right now to get it. But yeah, I'm not going to do that. And that's the challenge being brainwashed and raised and conditioned by narcissists is you feel guilty because those kind of people will always make you feel bad for asking them for help so let's say they call you three times in a month and you help them no question asked and they're all right thanks cool right peace you don't you don't ask for acknowledgement you don't ask for a brownie you don't ask for five you're just like yeah man cool it's no big deal man but then when you need some help and they're making it and they here's what they generally do they bitch and moan and complain like oh man i'm tired i'm busy oh man you always ask me for help like, wait i'm always asking for your help like no you're always asking me for and here's the thing you can't have this argument with him just be like because narcissists are going to blame you and they're never going to take any you know like oh yeah you're right you were there for me three times this month and i said no to you the last five times you asked hmm, okay they'll ne they'll never admit that so the minute someone starts to bitch and complain, because see, this is, okay, this is how they condition you. You're there for me. I'm not there for you. So when I ask for help, you help me. But when you ask for help, I'm going to bitch. I'm going to moan. I'm going to complain. I'm going to blame. I'm going to punish you. Or I'm say, how could you do this to me? Why do you always ask me for help? And they're going to make you feel bad for asking for help. Now, here's what happens. It gets conditioned into your nervous system, literally into your emotional system. So now when you even need help, you're like, well, I can't ask for help. I mean, I feel bad. So they condition it to you to, to the point where you won't even ask for help. But you're going to be there when they need help. Now, here's the really interesting thing. Look, you're going to have to understand something. If people are not there for you when you need them, especially when they can be there and help you and make a difference and they don't they're a nothing burger it's it's see here's the illusion you think well I, mike i need to keep these people in my life because because you know like what if i need someone yeah they're not going to help you and that's what you don't quite see it's a really weird kind of very subtle unconscious thing you think, well, they'll be there for me when I really need them. No, they won't. And no, they haven't. And they've already proven this to you. It's a really weird thing because like your heart's like, well, I've got to hold on to these people because otherwise, what if I need someone? They're not going to be there for you. They never were. And Okay, now here's, okay, watch this. Now here's how I learned to get out of that psychological trap. 
it's a fear trap of maybe I'm going to be alone and oh, what am I going to do? No. Here's the really interesting thing. Okay, so I've got, a, I've got a really good friend right now. He lives about three, four blocks away. Whenever I need help, he's there for me. Just the other night, I, I really needed to talk to him. And he's like, boom, he's, he was dropping what he was doing. He's, what's going on, man? And we fucking talked. He let me just spit it out. He's like, oh, man, bro, he gave me advice. You know, just being supportive. That meant the world to me. I mean, the guy lets me go over there. The first time, he, he literally uh, helped me change my oil. He's like, come on, anytime, man. No problem. Didn't need to change your oil. He's got ramps. He goes, put it up there. He goes, I've got, the, he's even got the little oil thing. Or you empty it into you take it take it down. He goes, just take it down to the freaking place and they'll replace it with a clean one and they'll give you that one for next time. And it's like, wow. And so the guys really helped me out. So one day I was driving by and he's he's him and this other guy, uh, he rented like a big truck because he had to cut all these trees down and they were loading it up and I pulled over and I jumped out, I jumped over his fence. He goes, What are you doing? I'm I'm helping you out, man. And so we spent about an hour loading up this freaking truck. You know, I'd probably save them guys a half hour or something like that. That's a guy I will help at a moment's notice. He could call me at 3 in the morning, and I'm there. So I figured that out when I was about 27, 28 years old. Now, I don't mind helping someone once in a while here, and there, but I'm telling you what. I am telling you. If they can help me and they don't, I'm done with them. So the really cool thing was I started meeting people that would reciprocate and then all of a sudden my emotional thing shifted because I really thought oh I need to hold on to you. I gotta you know be there for these people no matter what because you know they're gonna be there for me even when they had proven for years that they never helped me when I started allowing other people to come in and making space when they were returning the favor it, yeah I, I admit it felt uh, even like this one guy that I was talking about a moment ago when he changed my oil and let me go there, use his ramps another time to do it, blah, blah, blah. I felt so guilty. I was even nervous. Like really nervous. And as I'm looking back now, I realize it's because I wasn't used to people helping me out when I needed help. I just thought because narcissists had conditioned into me like you don't deserve it, <laughs> you know. But then you get around people enough that help you in return. You're like, it becomes a very normal thing. Like, hey, these are my people. These are my friends. This is this is right. The, you know what it is? I've been looking for a really good friend like I had when I was a kid. He died when I was 19. And I found him. You're better off alone making space than wasting time with people who don't reciprocate. I'm telling you right now. Because you're not going to meet better people. And when you start doing that, you're, like, you're like, God, why didn't I do this years ago? Okay, so this is completely different thought, different subject. It just kind of, I don't know why. Now, I might actually make a video about this. I was in a really, really bad accident 15 years ago. I got ran over by a car. I broke a lot of bones. I mean, it was really bad spinal injuries, etc. I also tore my brain in three different places. I had what they call a TBI, traumatic brain injury. Even two and a half years after the accident, the doctor had said, look, you're never going to be normal. You're never going to talk normal. You're never going to be able to work. This is your life. You're going to have to learn to accept it. The reason why I can talk normal now and words just flow out of my mouth, things fall into place, is 100% because of energy healing. I got zero help from the medical community, and I mean absolutely zero. All right, guys, that's it for this video. I told you it was going to be a short one. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please click subscribe, click the like button, go ahead and make a comment. And as always, there's a PayPal donation link right there in the description box. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.